Welcome to Single Fathers Today. I'm your host, Mark Hill. This podcast is geared towards single dads who have just received custody of their children, uh, going through the process of divorce um, or starting to go through the process and trying to figure out um, the best things you can do to be a good parent to your child, navigate the waters, and um, you know try to live their life to the fullest. One day, people, I will get that shit straight. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments to the show, uh, please send an email to singlefatherstoday at gmail.com. So this is the first show of the new year, and I have a couple of guests here uh, that's going to be on the show, and we're going to be talking about a couple of topics. Uh, one of the guests that's on the show, um, she happened to um, bring up this topic, so um the people I want to introduce is Mo, and oh, applaud for Mo. And we also have Quan on the show with us today. And we have the person who gave us this topic. It is Bree. Welcome to the show, y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> your quick background. Um, uh, my youngest daughter, Michelle, uh, Mo is her boyfriend, dating her, and uh, Quan is, uh, what I say, dating, friends, what are we, we going to call that? All of the above. All of the above. All right. So um, so going into this show today, um, we were kind of kicking around some ideas. Uh, it was going to originally be uh, Mo and myself having a conversation, but then Bree came in with a topic uh want to discuss which was about men and sensitivity now um as i hear that i just think of tevin campbell no not tevin campbell um from new edition um you need a man with sensitivity a man like me (laughs) (laughs) so um so the question is um, what Bree wanted to know. Well, Bree, ask the question. What's the okay, question? Okay, so my question is basically why are men emotionally unavailable? Why do they lack sensitivity? Why can't men be vulnerable? You know, why can't men be empathetic? And this is like in all aspects of life, whether it's relationships, you know, family, friends. They just, I don't know, men just don't feel Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with this as I'm the elder statesman, then I'm going to pass it around to these other gentlemen that are here with me. Um, for men, we do have that sensitivity side. We do, before you say anything, hold on, we do have that side. But there's a lot of times where, we'll start with society, you're supposed to have that strong outer shell, that outer exterior, you can't show that sensitive side because society looks at it as a weakness. Now, I'm sure that you can say, well, behind closed doors, you know, when you're in your home, yes, you can show it. And yes, we should. But I think there's times also with the stuff that goes on with the daily, you know, daily realm in your life, it's kind of hard to break that down. I will say from my perspective that's probably one of my biggest flaws. I do have a sensitive side. I do have a caring side. I mean, hell, I've helped raise three girls as a single parent. Um, but sometimes it is kind of difficult to get that that out there. Or sometimes in society or in doing the daily life, you tend to forget it. You, you get so, so caught up with everything else going on that you don't, um, you kind of blank that out. So... Either one of you guys, the, the younger generation, you want you want to say anything, Mo? What, what's what's your take on that? Uh, for me, I'll say society does play a big role in how we grow up, especially being a young black a young black man. You know, it's hard because you got you got to fight your own peers, society, and everything else. So you you grow, you grow up with that shell that you got to take care of yourself, and you got to be strong out here because. When you go to school for the young, like in my generation, you can't be out there crying and stuff because people be like, oh, you soft or, you know, are oh, you acting gay or you acting like a girl. So for us, we just grew up with that being desensitized to everything. So that really affects us when you grow up as far as everything you do, whether it's like a relationship with your family, even with your friends, you always tend to have your guard up because now it's like, 
I could, can I trust this person or can I, you know, how can I really go forward with it? So you just go up with your guard and I mean, society really messes us up, but it's something we all need to work on because nobody's perfect. And the older you get, you can't make excuses too because you just got to grow up with it. Honestly. Quan, <clears throat> Quan what, what's your take on it? Um, when I think about it, <clears throat> a lot of it has to do with trauma. You know, like what do you mean by trauma? So, like, let me give you an example. Um, my mom, she was a single mom, right? And uh, you know, I was—I'm the only boy. I had two sisters, and I was always, you know, you gotta be tough, gotta be tough, gotta be tough. That's always what my mom instilled in me. You need to be tough. You can't be soft out here. So. You know, I started doing stuff, you know, like she made me start hanging out with people I didn't want to hang with, you know. So when you start getting older and you start realizing it's way more out here where you can you can actually show your emotion and not really have to worry about what somebody think about it. You know, like when me graduating high school, that's when I really started hanging around people that's like, yo, you got to be like that, man. You, you know, you do your own thing. You all right. You can. Be you, you know, like you don't gotta be hard body, you don't gotta be tough. Show some sensitivity. Oh, by the way, that was Ralph Tresvant. So that was <clears throat> from New Edition. I had to look that up real quick. <laughs> so um on that I agree with, you know, just like with Quan, um my I was raised by a single parent, my mother, it was just my sister and myself. And um I think for me it was Putting up, I mean, I, I witnessed a lot of things that um, some of the heartaches that my mother went through, some of the things that my sister went through heartache wise. And I had to, you know, you wanted to make sure that you had to be hard to be for that protective mode, I guess, for my mother and for my sister at that time. And what I learned was you can show that sense of that that softer side, but you couldn't show it in the out in the open way. You had to make sure it was kind of off to the side. You know, when you with your lady one on one, when you about to handle your business, then you can okay, I'll, I'll open up that door a little bit. But in any other situation, no, I I, I got to hold this this front because the things that we hear is a woman wants a man that's strong, a strong man, a powerful man. The man's going to handle his handle his business, not going to let anyone mess with him or like I used to pe tell people, don't be fucking with my cubs. You know, got to be that hard role. And if you have kids, you know, have daughters and that, you got to really be tough because the boys going to be coming around. You got to, you got to man up. You got to steal up. And you hear this constantly over and over and over and over and over. And it, it, it gets ingrained in you. And then when you meet that lady that wants to see that softer side of you, and you don't, it's, it's hard to turn that thing off. And in some cases you can, but again, if it's been ingrained in you, it's easy to fall right back into it. Or if the relationship with this one person doesn't work out and then you're with this girl that you open yourself up with, you care about, I've been there and you open yourself up completely to them and then you get hurt. It's over. You harden up even more. You get hardened up even more than you were before. And then when the next one comes around, it's the same thing again. You're more guarded about how much are you going to open up to them. And then if something goes wrong and that one hurts you, you harden up again. And it's kind of like calluses. Over time, it gets built up. And then when that one comes along and you like her and she likes you, and now you got to try to strip all that stuff away. In some cases, it's not that easy to strip that stuff away. Would I? Would you agree, fellas? If there's something you got a different view, tell me. No, I no, you're right. Agree. I agree for sure. That's, it, uh, you know, like for example, Bree. You know, me and her. She oh, if I had a video camera over here right now, y'all, yo, she just she's sitting up there standing next to Quan, got her hands on her hips, looking like <laughs> like Florida Evans, huh, James? <laughs> Go ahead, Quan. You're saying she's one of those. Uh, women that's she yeah she she wants you to she she understands your background you know everything you've been through but she's more of a like i said earlier you don't have to be like that like with me 
express yourself. So, you know, I kind of recently just started to actually open up with stuff. And okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me get my take on things. All right, slide over, slide over to the mic. All right. Because <clears throat> everything y'all saying is true as far as trauma, as far as society and everything. And how you said um, men are known to be these strong men. You know, you, you have to have a wall up. You have to be made of steel and things like that. But the way I look at it is... Are you strong by being controlled by society or are you stronger being yourself? That's the way I look at it. Mm. Like, how, like, are you really this strong man if you can't even feel, if you can't, you know, be yourself, if you can't be vulnerable? Because it's not just about being strong, it's about controlling it. Okay. Knowing when to be strong, yeah. knowing when to be vulnerable. Does that make sense? Yeah. It makes sense, but let me, let me try to turn this a little bit different. Say that you're in a relationship with somebody and that man hurt you, man hurt you deep. But you want to be open and receptive to a new relationship. Exactly. So you exit that relationship. And no, maybe the relationship might have been physical or emotional abuse. So now when you go into the next relationship, now, are you going to be as open initially with this next relationship like you were with the first one? Or are you going to be a little bit more guarded to guard your feelings? Be guarded up. I mean, with society, most people would be guarded. No. But, okay, me personally, I don't go into situations guarded. Even if I'm, like, with the same person, I, if anything, I would wait until I'm ready to go into a new situation if I know I'm going to mm -hmm. be guarded. But I don't think it's fair to go into a situation with past trauma or, like, you know, carry, things carry, holding you back, carrying things yeah. in. Right, carrying the, it's, carrying it's, the baggage. Like I said, it's all about control and, like, knowing when to be a certain way, knowing when to be vulnerable, knowing how to deal with your emotions. Like, I don't know, men call women sensitive when, I don't know, women are considered weak. But at the end of the day, we're the strong, we're the strong ones because we know how to deal with our emotions. Uh, like, if you think about it, mm, if you think about it, I women go through a that. lot. Women go through a lot. Yes, and women we, go. And we, oh. and we deal with it. We actually deal with it and embrace it. Men but don't. We, we go through. Go. Y'all don't embrace it. Who wants to take this? Who wants to take this one? Okay, think of, think of, women think of men are not, are not consistently... Uh, we go through a lot. Hold on, hold on. So, 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 Mike Kwan. Go ahead, go ahead. Most women are, you know, when it, like, like you said, when you deal with things, you guys deal with things differently, you know, like uh, irrational sometimes. You know, you don't really think about actually what's going to affect. You just go into it like, hey, I'm a, it is what it is. You know, no. you don't really care. You know, that's, that's really how like it is. like losing somebody, like losing someone close to you. Think of a male's reaction versus a female's reaction to it. Well, and it's like, men, 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 even when y'all losing somebody and y'all hurt, y'all purposely hold that in. You mean losing somebody in relationships? No. Not even relationships. Like, like any, any, whatever. Job. Whatever. Uh, like I mean, death. Because when I, I like. Y'all hold that in. You, you, you're right. You're right about that. Because I, I lost. Why? That's just how we're taught to. Yeah. I'm that's like, how we're, that's how you're, you're taught. I mean, I, from an early age. I mean, yeah. you got to think about it from an early age. We've always been taught, you you know, you got to be strong. You got to be right. tough. You got to be able, you know, show that strong presence. You know, um, back in my in my time, when the mother and father got divorced, the one thing I remember is hear people say, "Well, now you're the man of the house. You're the young man of the house." And even today, a lot of single women that I think, especially from. Um, down south, and I'm not saying all of them. I'm not saying all of them. But you do have some of them that will sit there and say, well, he's the man of the house. Now, this little boy, my little son, he's the man of the house. He has to be up and be strong. And if you're hearing that at a young age mm -hmm. and it's constantly being drummed into you from a young age, you got to steal your – that's what you're knowing. That's what you're understanding. That's what you're being programmed. Mm -hmm. So when that's programmed into you, that's what you're going to take with you and go forward with it. So how do you decouple yourself from that when that's been drummed into your head from a young age? It's hard. Yeah, that's, that's very like, hard. You could, that's you could try, but it's hard for a lot of us, especially like growing up, when you, your mom will always tell you, boys don't cry, like man up. So it starts from, from your household. That's where it should start from. So women should always help their kids. Like I should say young boys express the emotion from being at the you you have a son so you should 
for right now, you know these problems, so you should actually show him like it's okay to express his emotions. I know sometimes you might do that, but like you know, boy, get up, you know, be tough. But sometimes you still gotta remember like that's going to he's going to always keep that back in his mind. Like okay, I gotta get up and be tough and fight everything off and no and not show emotions in a way. And then once he gets into society, society's gonna tell him the same thing. So now he's gonna play in a constant role like what what's right and what's wrong. And that's what that's as as men, that's what we play a role in because. Somebody could try to help you express emotions, but when you go out to the real world, everybody's like, bro, you're tripping. Men don't do that. Get back to work. Nobody's trying to hear your problems. So now you constantly playing a battle like, should I show my emotions or should I just? So it's a constant. We always. Well, look at it in, look at it in sports. You get hurt in sports. Suck it up. Man up. Man up. Yeah. Be tough. Oh, yeah, I, I was an athlete too, right? I mean, as men, we don't have mm-hmm. no room to show emotion, quote unquote, because it's like, okay, that happened. So what's next? You got to keep going. And that's how it is for us. Like, we can't be sorry for ourselves because we're going to be dads. We're going to have responsibilities. We got to take things in our own hands. So you can't see. I mean, of course, sometimes in our private time, we can sit down and dwell on things and be like, man, maybe I shouldn't have done that in that way, but I already did it. See, but that's that's why, like when I said the trauma thing, like looking at it this way. So, you know, uh, like I said, my mom, I had two sisters. If my mom's telling me this, and my sister's seeing that, like, even if she's younger than me, if she's a baby, babies, they might not literally remember, but that trauma affects their brain regardless. So it might be something 10 years from now. They're like, man, I remember, you know. Yeah. It, it's just something that clicks. Or, you know? it's, or it's subconscious. It, it never yeah. shows. It'll never manifest itself within you because it's your subconscious has it. It's just... That piece is all the way stuck in the back of your mind, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you don't know why you do certain things. You just do it. Okay, I have another question, and this is based. This is mainly for Mark and Myquan, because y'all got kids. Do y'all think it affects like your children? Like, how do you think it affects your kids not being emotionally available to them because of you know trauma and being so strong? Like, both y'all got daughters. You know, when your daughters need you, when your daughters need you know their dad to be sensitive to whatever situation they have going on. But you're like you have this mindset of like not, not showing emotions, not being weak and stuff like that. But they're weak, and they need you. But like, like what do you you know? Um. Okay. Who do you want to answer? Who do you want to answer that first? Me or him? You're older, so you. Uh, anyway, um, my explanation may be a little bit longer. So, one thing that I still. One of the things that I pride in myself and I, I still do is, um, especially from looking where my girls are at right now, um, once I went through my divorce and was awarded custody, my whole mindset changed um, from being more laid back and um, kind of loose to being more rigid because I had to. Because if you've been married and you go through a divorce, you find it's the worst of people that come out. Uh, like the song says, a thin line between love and hate. I had individuals that tried to take my kids from me. I had individuals that told me that I could not raise my kids. There's no way a dad could raise their kids. Um, there were moments where I started to question myself. So what I had to do was, like society says, man up, steal up, harden up. And that's what I did. I, you know, I told my daughters, you guys are a mini gang. You look out for each other. I'm being the papa bear. And I had to play that hard role. Now, when we're at home, high and closed doors, yes, I loosen that up a little bit. But I had to harden myself up to be strong. For them. Now, the effects that that might have had on them later on down the line, and uh, we had one show, I had one show with Mo where um, I found out that Michelle, some of the things that Michelle was doing kind of had Mo scratch his head a little bit. And it was some of the things that I had done or some of the ways that I had lived my life and what she observed, and she picked up on some of those things. There were some positive things that she picked up, but there were some negative things. And one of them that Mo mentioned was she has that hard, that hard shell. 
So in that regard, I think that that is an, that's an effect. That's not a good effect of it. Um, but yes, seeing us being that hard role, yes, it can affect them, um, sons and daughters. So, but the question is, well, what do I do? If I go in too soft, that can have bad, that can be positive and negative, but in a lot of cases, it can be negative. If I'm coming in hard, it can be positive, but then it can be too much. So how do you balance? You got to be hard, but you got to have that soft side. It's trying to find that balance, and it's not an easy thing. There's no rule book or to say, okay, I got to be hard this way, or I got to be soft this way. There's no, you know, we're, we're trying to figure it out. But it's just, you know, a lot of times we're not just doing it because we have nothing else better to do. We're doing the best that we can with the situation that's been given to us. I like that explanation. Hey, we got to give him a round of applause. Yes, that's, that was great right there. <laughs> oh, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> all right. All right. So, Quan, what, what's your take on it? Um, like, well, for me, like I have, my, my daughters are young, you know, they I have a, a, well, she'll be four, actually in what, three or four days. My oldest, um, my youngest is two. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, like having my first daughter, it kind of instantly, like as soon as I seen her, you know, as soon as she came out, it was. It's a switch. Yeah. You know, like it wasn't, no, hey, I can't, I can be tough. I'm going to be, no, I instantly turned it to, you know, a softy for my, you know, my daughter. Cause yep. every time you look at him, like, yeah, that's me. Like that's I made that, you know. So you you kind of get that sense of, you know, proudness. Like I actually get to be here and watch you grow, and still, you know, like you've been through a life, well, not your whole life, but you've been through, you know, childhood. You know, you're a young adult, you know. So it's kind of like I get to watch you become something that I probably wasn't when I was younger, you know. And I know right from wrong now, so. I'm showing you like, hey, it's a way you can do this, but I'm going to let you make that decision on your own. All you can do is really kind of give like some advice, you know? So like when I say being sensitive with my daughters, man, my youngest, she's like, <laughs> she <laughs> she's something different. And, you know, it's, you know, they say the second child is kind of, you mm-hmm. know, the, the, the toughest, roughest one, you know? So she kind of makes it to where, I find that balance all the way, you know, because like, like he said, you be too hard. You like, oh, man, it could be a negative effect, but it could be positive. If you be too kind of laid back, I feel like, you know, most kids would try to take advantage of you being, yep. you know, laid back. So, like, yep, it's, it's really, you know, it, it, it kind of it's like trials and, and tribulation. Like, I, I have to I there's have to go no, through my first no game. There's no rule book. Yeah. There's you no know? rule book. So what do you do? You just go, you going through the motion. You learn. You learn on the go. You never be ready to be a parent, honestly. No. Nope. You, you you learning it on the go. Yep. So I mean, hey. Okay, so it sounds like both of you guys are saying that you naturally became more vulnerable once you had kids. Just yeah. Having yes. Daughters. Okay. Yes. When um when Marissa was born, I just remember seeing her the first time, and it, it just it melted. It, it melted me. When um. Monica was born, the same effect. When Michelle was born, the same effect. You know, and it's there, but again, you have all these other things that you hold up. Like my, like the girls are telling me, yeah, dad plays that role like he's all hard and all tough, but we know dad's a softy. He may do all his barking, but then in the back end, he'll go ahead and do stuff for you. You know, so it's there. It's just that we have different ways of trying to show it because again, you got to be able. If you go in, if you go out there with this soft exterior, people just want to try to walk all over you. So mm-hmm. you got to have that thing that's there. And like I said earlier, you get these calluses built up after relationships and that are gone bad, or you've opened your heart up to someone and they basically walked all over it. It doesn't go away. It's always there with you. And even though you try to flush that baggage out. There's going to be some residue there. Yeah. And, you know, in, if you've been in a whole bunch of relationships, it gets to be a lot harder. Or if you was in a real deep relationship, like a lot of women, they get into a deep relationship and that man hurts them. 
and it's hard for them to come back from. Same thing with the guys. And again, I've been on both sides of that coin. But I will say, if you found the right one, she could help you out, though. Yeah. Yes. Like, you uh, that, find yes, your person. That, I agree. I agree with that one. Yes. You got to find your person. Yeah. And, sure. and men know, like, that's how I always tell Michelle, I'm like, guys know who they're going to take serious and who they just going to do whatever they want to do to, just based on how you feel about a person. And yeah. You know, and, like, and, and, and that's the thing that, uh, um, you know, it's how they act, uh, the, the person you're with, you know. Um, oh, what was that movie? Um I'm going to get you sucker. There was a scene when um, Jack uh, was playing by Keenan Ivory Wayans and then um, Casey, uh, Bernie Casey was playing uh, Jack Slade. And he says, you know, there's two types of ladies in this world. There's one that's to be um, laid and that to be loved. And he told him, he says, when I was with your mother, that was being loved. He said, you see that at the end of the bar and the girl was in a red leather suit, you know, looking all sexy and everything. He said, that's to be laid. It's just how it's presented. And we, you know, you got to look that that way. You know, you got to kind of look at that as far as far as uh, going in a relationship, because you'll have some ladies out there and I'm sure everybody has seen it. Ladies, too. You see that girl that's in the club. And she's looking all nice and, and sharp and looking all hot, got her things all hanging out. And the guy's going to be like, I know what I'm going to do with that right there. You know, she looking all hot and cute and everything, but I was going to do what I got to do and then head on and step off and go do my business. Mm-hmm. But then you see the one that carries himself in a much more proper way. And, and I'm not saying looking all 1700s prim and proper, but it's the way she carries herself. Cool. And... That is the one that says, you know what, that's the one that I want right there. So it, it just depends on how they present themselves. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the ones that's looking all just hanging out and everything. Well, how come a man can't take me seriously? Look in the mirror. Now, yeah, there, there, there's a time and place for that. But if you want someone to take you serious and you want that man to be open up and be sensitive to you, you got to look at, okay, is he looking to have fun or is he looking for someone that's long term? If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, please tell me. Okay. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. You're right. All right. So I have another question. Um. <laughs> wait a minute. Did, wait, wait. Did we, just, did we just say it was going to be one question per show or something like she, that? She coming she, with she, she coming, I mean, she coming with everything. I just want to hear y'all take on things. I'm not a man. Okay. So. Uh, we hope not. <laughs> what's the question? Hey, yeah. Um, what's the question? If you've ever had a moment with, I don't know, a significant other where you felt like, I don't know, most vulnerable, where you could just be a hundred percent, like what what is it about a a woman that will make you be a hundred percent sensitive? Like what is it that a woman? I don't know what. Yeah, basically, what is it about a woman mm. that'll make you be vulnerable? Like what? What makes you feel safe, I should say? What makes you feel safe enough to do that? If you're not if you haven't gotten that yet, then you know, you ain't gonna answer it. But if you have ever felt that or how been much like time that do somebody, we have? Like, she she putting us on the spot. How much know? time <laughs> does she have? I mean, like what makes you feel safe? I, well, me what makes me feel safe? Um, like most of the time you you can't just go into any, you know, companionship or anything, just off rip thinking like that, you know, it's, it takes time to be, you know, to build stuff. So, what made you put your guard down? Um, you know, after a while, when you start noticing that this person is actually there for you, uh, unconditionally, mm-hmm. you feel me? That's when you start realizing, like, okay, you know, I can open up to her. Um, she's not gonna judge me for the things I've done in the past and the things that, you know, present things that I'm doing, you know. So, uh, you know, like, of course. Since you're standing right here, you know, like, yeah, you know. Better, like, better, better I, answer it right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a lot of things have changed, you know, since I, you know, we actually started dating. It was, you know, when we first met each other, we were like great, great friends. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I built that bond with her and we like learned each other real fast. He used to be this hard body, like didn't want to. I used to watch him go through stuff it. and not just. 
don't know. Just so tough. Just so I mean, tough. But see, like that's that's like you've been a product of your environment. Like you know, but growing up, where you growing up, we grew up in the same city. You yeah. know, so that's that's all we know. You know, like anytime somebody think about food. Uh oh. What was that? Oh, my phone. Oh, it's phone. Uh, All right. So, anytime you grow up in a city like that, you know, you got your everybody. I really don't know anyone that's really not tough. You know, like you might find some people that's you know they're in their own lane, but you know, when you meet a girl, no matter where you are, you go college, you know, anywhere, you know when that person is. That's the one for you. That's the right one. You feel me? Like you, you know that. Mm-hmm. You, you, you can just feel it. You know. So like. You feel safe. You, yeah, you, you just feel. Yeah, it's your it's safe space. What they do for you to make you get that? Like, damn, I can really trust her. Like, you know, in a way, like. It's the see, demeanor. Yeah, like if she doing things that other people weren't doing for you, 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 you think to yourself like, man, ain't nobody never did this for me. It's the little things that they do that you realize like, damn, she probably really do care about me. So like, I gotta like return the favor in a way like. So I'm just be like, let me open up a little bit, but you gotta open up as time go on. Though you can't just jump straight out and yeah, cause you, you right putting here. your heart on your sleeve yeah. too fast can you backfire know, on you. I got something to say about that, but uh, I'm gonna let Mark answer first. Oh, you you, say that. you got too many questions. It's not a question. It's just like <laughs> it's just a comment off of that. Okay, what? Why? Why you asking all them questions? <laughs> <laughs> asking I'm all saying. them questions. Um. Okay. Um. Mm. I think that the guys pretty much um they pretty much said what I was gonna say. Um I don't know what more I could could kinda add to that. Um I I, I don't know. I, I don't really have anything else I could add to it. Uh, that's, Mo? that's it in a nutshell. I mean, yeah, I don't know. So um I don't know. Should I ask? Should I ask if you have another question? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's not really a question. It's more so just like a, a statement or comment based off what my Quan and Mo said, like how you guys talked about um, basically being yourself with someone. So while you're putting up this wall and this shell, you're obviously not showing that sensitive side of you, right? So the woman you're dating. How do you know if she really knows you for you? And how can you say that she loves you? So when y'all talk about unconditional love, unconditional love is knowing somebody 100% all sides of them and still choosing to love them. That's unconditional love. Well, it's like this. As I said, as I said earlier and earlier and earlier, when you go through so much, you know, when you have those things going, you get that callus built up. And, and sometimes it, the callus, it's like when you get a callus on your finger. Um, if it's not that that thick, it's real easy to, to strip that callus away so you can actually get to the the soft side. Mm-hmm. There's other times where if, you know, like they say those the men that are out there working so hard and their hands are just real just hard and tough, mm-hmm. it may take longer to get and break down to that callus. It doesn't mean that the person doesn't have the soft hands. It just means that it takes a lot longer to get there. Mm-hmm. And we all, I think all guys try to work. If you want to be serious in a relationship, you have to, you, you're going to work your way towards that. And I'm a work in progress as well. I can, you know, I put myself out there on the show many times and that's one of the things that I'm trying to work myself into and to, uh, to open up on that. So, um, it's doesn't mean that you don't want to be that way you want to but it's how do you get there and if she's willing to understand that and willing to say hey this guy's worth it and then work towards it and then eventually it'll open up it doesn't mean that they don't want to get to that position it's just that sometimes it's a little bit harder for some than others based on their life experience because everyone's life experience is different absolutely for sure so I think we've pretty much summed all that up. Yeah. <clears throat> so as um, as we come to the close of the show, I want to thank all of my guests. I think I really do think this was a very uh, informative uh, topic on that. I got I to gotta give you some credit on that one. I got to give you some credit on that one, Bree. That was pretty good. Shout out to Bree. 
Yeah. yeah. So the therapist in me came up. Oh, the therapist. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we gonna, we gonna give you a little applause on that one. Just a little one. <laughs> there you go. Just two claps. All right, we'll give. It. All right, there. We, we we'll give her those claps. So we'll go with that. So as we come to ending up the uh, wrapping up this show, uh, I want again say um, happy new year for everybody. Hope you have a wonderful 2022. And uh, again, I want to thank all my guests for coming on the show. And this is Single Fathers Today. Again, if you have any questions or comments related to the show. Just shoot an email to singlefatherstoday at gmail.com. And uh, hope you guys are hanging in there and you keep fighting. Mm-hmm.